TBS Tango 2, hottest radio of 2020. Get excited. G'day, Stu from UAV Futures here, and today, well, I'm excited. I can't wait to finally be able to show you this video, push published, because this has been under NDA for a while. You might have heard some rumors on the internet, but today it is here. You are watching the video. This is their TBS Tango 2, and let me tell you straight off the bat, I am absolutely in love. There is a reason why after getting home from my first flight ever flying with this, I ordered 10 micro crossfire receivers. Why? It is so simple. This radio is kind of doing everything that I wanted to do. It's it's just, it's a dream come true. So finally, we've got to give it to TBS. They have made the radio, which I'm going to say is perfect, but yeah, I'm saying perfect for 99% of those pilots out there. And there's a tiny, tiny percentage it's not for, but uh, when we go through this thing, I want you to think, gee, is that going to suit my needs? And I guarantee 99% of you are going to be a very, very happy. So what we're going to do in this video, video, we're going to put it on the bench. We're going to kick it off. We're going to look at the text and the specs. And most importantly, we're going to get out to the field. We're going to fly this thing around. We'll talk about the pros, cons, all that sort of stuff. I'll show you my experience and also we'll hand it over to some of the other boys and we'll see what they think. And let me tell you, every single pilot who had this in their hand, there was almost nothing but positive. So you're going to be very, very excited. And then make sure you watch the whole video because towards the end, we're going to wrap it up and we are going to compare it quite heavily to the x Lite, to the jumper and to find out what is the radio you should be getting in 2020 and why when you look at this thing and the capabilities that this thing can do, it's just, it is almost a no brainer. So let's do it. As a bit of an overview, you can see it is a drastic redesign from the original Tango which was a huge radio this bad boy right here fits very very easily in the hands it's kind of like the X like shape but it's doing things a little bit better it's a little bit more ergonomic it has built-in crossfire inside it it goes up to 250 milliwatts which we'll talk about in a little bit as well got a kick-ass antenna on the top and I should say this one's important it is only made for crossfire it is just for the crossfire ecosystem and nothing else so if you're flying like old school for Tarba or you've got your free sky stuff, whatever you're going to be using this radio, it is not for you. But I'm sure for a lot of people out there, that is absolutely not going to be a problem, especially when you can see what this thing can do. So let's do it. Let's go I'll get these radios out of the way. Let's go through some of the features on the radio. First and foremost, like I mentioned, in internally, it has a micro crossfire in here. It goes up to 250 milliwatts. And for most people, you're going to be getting about 4Ks of range. So if you fly more than four kilometers, well, this radio isn't going to be for you. But I'm going to say for most pilots out there, you're Good. that is going to be more than enough for your bando flying, your racing, your forest flying, wherever you're going, unless you're doing extreme long ranges. And I do get better range on this than I get on something like my x Lite or my Jumper. I haven't had any fail safes on this, and I've been flying it almost non-stop from the very first time I got this. It goes between this and my DJI radio. They're kind of like the only two radios that I've been using. Uh, if we look on the top, we have this awesome antenna right here. Now, this, I should be pointed out, is pretty cool because it can also double as an antenna stand when you go to put your radio down and also it folds down quite nicely so you're not going to be snapping it off in your bag if you're just throwing this in your backpack very very easy to kind of just get set up get ready to go it takes up a minimal amount of space on the top if we look at some of the switches oh and it does i'm not sure if it comes with some stickers i've just slapped mine on here because the stickers look cool and i like using this radio so i've kind of personalized it uh you can see we have two i'm gonna hopefully we can get this in shot i'll put a picture on the screen as well we have kind of two rockers how can i do this two rocker switches right here which are very very different to the standard switches we're kind of used to on the x lights and stuff this i think is such a better idea they look way more robust there is almost no chance of knocking this and snapping a switch off in your bag underneath that we've got uh these switches right here and this has to be one of my another favorite feature of mine how many times do you have your arm switch and you've heard stories of someone putting their radio down i know what's happened to me i've bumped it my drone spun up or i've had a wing and i've bumped it it's just not a good situation these switches are far too easy to accidentally clip with your arms or when you're moving your radio around. This right here, it is almost nigh impossible to <clears throat> not impossible to accidentally arm your drones if you have this radio and you set this up to your arm switch because these little buttons right here they depress and they stay in so if that is your arm switch there's no other way that that is going to be arming or anything like that very very smart clever design and you can feel when you're flying around okay that button is pressed in all that sort of stuff easily accessible when your hands are on here there's, there's another switch button right here and then there's two little momentary switches on the back you've got one there and also one on this side now moving on one big thing about this 
radio and a design philosophy when I rang up Trappy on the phone. I was like, right, tell me more about this radio. I love it. I want to know every single detail that went into it. They did two revisions when it came to making this radio. So it's been in, in not in production, it's been in design for about a year and a half where they totally scrapped their original designs. And this is the final, I guess, third revision of what they've decided this is what they want. And I am so glad they took the time to make it because this has full-size gimbal. It is a full-size radio, I should say, or a full-functioning radio that is in a tiny form factor. This radio was designed to just throw in your bag, take it out, and get a full-size flight experience. And you can see that in the gimbals. We've got some Hall Effect gimbals right here in the middle. They feel gorgeous. They are extremely smooth. They're going to last you a long time. TBS makes top-notch quality stuff, and this thing is absolutely no exception. If you just look at the gimbal size between the X-Lite right here and uh, the little Tango 2, you can see there is a huge amount of difference size wise the actual radios themselves are very very similar but gimbal size trappy said that's the guy who owns tbs he said one of the biggest i guess things they wanted to design around was having a full size gimbal in here and it absolutely makes sense gimbals are where you spend your time connecting with the drone once the goggles are down all that sort of stuff is gone and it's sitting in your hands if you've got some nice gimbals you really are going to notice it with the x light they felt a little bit small a little bit tinny but uh this one right here I've got to say the gimbals in this are just some of the best gimbals I have ever felt. You can see in the middle we do have a tiny screen but it is an OLED screen. It's extremely high resolution. I'll turn it on a little bit in a little bit but I must say it doesn't really capture it on camera with the lights on and I can't turn the lights off because then that turns the camera off so it's a bit of a pain but I'll do my best but I should say I don't have any issues. When I first got this I thought gee that screen's going to be a little bit small but because it's such a high res screen I found it was more than easy to go through there, change the settings and that's exactly what happens. When when you see us out in the field for the first time trying to fly this thing up it just you know we had to change some things on the settings it's running freedom tx it will be jumping to open tx but yeah super easy to set up the screen i thought it was an issue but absolutely you know it was totally fine and then underneath of course we've just got our page button menu button little exit button a scroll wheel here which you can also uh scroll up and down to cycle through your menus and then also you've got your on off switch you charges by USB C. it's got an inbuilt 1s battery and a little headphone jack right there so let's turn this thing on before We'll go out to the field, hold the button in, so you can see it says Freedom TX right there. And I can just tell on the screen when I'm looking at here, I've got another monitor that I can see. It kind of gets blown out by the light a fair bit, but when you're looking at it with the eyes, it's, you know, throttle not idle, press any key to skip, super, super easy to read. So I should say, I should try and take a photo actually. This doesn't do a fair justice of what I'm actually seeing right now. I wonder if I can take it, do that. I'll take a picture and uh, so you guys can see just how much clearer it is. Hopefully this will come up. Yeah, so there we go. So I'll put this picture that I took in this review so you can see it is significantly clearer in person than uh, through this with all the lights and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, so you go through, it sets up the exact same as T as uh, OpenTX. You can go through, you can plug it into the TBS agent as well, all that sort of stuff. And it is going to be porting to OpenTX later in the year. That's what Trappy said. That's where the plans are. Now let's do it. Let's go out to the field. That's it on the bench. That's some of the parts, the overview of the radio. Let's go have some fun. We'll see what the other pilots think. And then the important part, we're going to come back. We're going to look at the pros, the cons. Who is this for? Who is it not for? And also compare it to some of these other pilots out here who might be thinking about the jumper, might be thinking about Free Sky, which as far as I'm concerned is totally dead. You can't even get a Free Sky radio that works uh, very well anymore when it comes to binding up to D8, all that sort of stuff. Don't worry. That now I'm getting, I'm getting distracted with my frustration with Free Sky, but let's go do it. Have some fun. Strap yourself in. Grab a cup of coffee because the Tango 2 is something you do not want to miss. And uh, it's just clearly evident when you see all the other pilots doing it. We've got pinches. We've got thumbers. We're out to go have some fun. So let's see what the boys think of myself in three, two, one. Woo! Oh, and two, I want to know, can you pick what's wrong with the drone when we first go to take off? We fix it and we show you why, but yeah, I want to see if you can pick it up before we did, because it took us a little bit of brainstorming and then went, aha, uh -huh, it's like a light bulb going off. So I want to know in the comments, were you able to figure out what was wrong with Granger's drone? Because that's who we bound it to before we actually took it off. So let's go do it in three, two, one. Radio out here in the field with all the boys in the background, long range Tony, wingman Jono, and the race kid Granger. What we're doing today, pretty exciting stuff. It is the Tango 2. We're going to put it through its paces, find out how it goes, all that sort of stuff, and find out is this going to be the radio of the future? Is the hype real? And let's just do it and have some fun. I'll go first and then we'll see what the other boys think. So let's do it. Three, two, one, boop. Well, if it does, it's your quad we're losing, yeah, right? Exactly. Alrighty, so got a picture. We're flying around with Granger's rig, Tango 2. And I gotta say, before we take it off, I love the feel of this thing in my hands. I love the switches, like you saw when I had it on the bench. And the things like 
I forget which one we put as arm. Oh, I don't have my radio on. So it's good. Great, just getting scared. But yeah, I love the clicking arm switches. And I'm going to say, does anyone pinch here? Yeah. All right, so this will be interesting, but uh, I wound the sticks out a little bit because I knew other pilots would be flying it, but for a thumber, I'm kind of already in love. <laughs> Grange, did you have smart audio on this? Yeah. Why you isn't, know how to do it? Why isn't... Like, hang on, is this on the right model? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, do you know how to quad? Yeah, you don't have smart audio, you fool. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. I fiddle with it all the time. Okay, if you're going to tell me it's different to this... No, it's not, but... It's not, it nothing's coming up, bro. I'm not getting any smart audio. Ugh. I'll just fly you on, bro. All right, all right, I'll fly. I'll fly it around <laughs> on. Let me start my DVR. Hopefully, oh god. Okay, this anyway, this could go poorly. Or you know, watch him wreck your rig. Yep, take off. Oh just, Jesus! I'm I'm. Just go left. Pitch left. Stop. I'm trying. <laughs> oh, no, stop, hold on, hold on. Look. Hold on, no, wait. Okay. Oh, good. We put, look at that back prop. That is the worst prop I've ever seen. What? <laughs> For a professional, anyway. Yeah, stand back. They're brand new propellers. Okay. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh shit. No, I, I clicked this. Uh, go get it, Granger. What are you doing? It felt weird. It felt like it wasn't responding the way I wanted to. You got the sticks reversed. Maybe. I reckon you've got one reversed. I did switch it from mode one to mode two. I reckon you'll find something to put it on the floor and, and do a yeah okay right, yeah right, yeah tilt left right forward backwards and my predictions one of them's back to front yeah I need to reverse one of the things one of them yeah that's why it was feeling weird yeah, I'm trying yeah, to take yeah, off yeah. right and it's going left yeah have you got it and backwards so let's, let's stand back over here. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right, <laughs> and we'll see if it goes right. Okay. That's it's your. Yours. It's yours. So your right is your, which is like mode three. Or that's four, mode actually. one because on. I... Okay, so it's the mapping is all messed up. Yeah. I love working with professionals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does anyone so have a laptop? <laughs> okay. Is, no, no, isn't on the. It's oh, yeah, on yeah, the mixer. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So, so what we need do... to switch two of those channels. So the so rudder. So we don't have to go back and get a laptop. So the rudder and the aileron need to change. So move instead of rudder we don't want we want that to be aileron so push the switch and it will change push the, push the no, steam right, i got it i got it aileron. this is wing skills you know you can just tap the stick and it will just change. leave me alone <laughs> all right go and stick it down all right, go plug it in See, you guys are telling me I can't take off properly. So what's on? This little button. Hold on. Right. Go on. Can you not have it in the grass? Yeah, can you put it? Better. Hey, well done, you teenager. Okay, boomer. Okay, boomer. How is it? That looks viable. Hey, Tony saves the day. <laughs> Good boy, Tony. I'm still getting scared. This is my drone, remember? Alright, put it down. I've got to go for a rip on this. I've got to wreck Granger's pack. <laughs> Alright, take two. Here you go, Tony. Thank you. You are the man. Wing pilots rule. Oh, In the hand. Feels nice. I, I really like the idea of this click-in switch, but now I'm wondering... It's going to take a little bit to get used to. Okay. And I'm not going to talk about the drone or the goggles. We're just talking about the radio. Ooh, and your drone feels nice. I know I said I wasn't going to talk about it. All right. In the hand. Now, this drone is fast, Granger. What are these motors? Yeah, BMS boys. Okay, all right. Flying around. The spring tension is probably going to be perfect for most people. I'm going to probably loosen it up by about 10%. I love the fact, let's see how far we can go out here without, uh, see if we get any fail safes or anything like that, even though it's on 25 milliwatts. You can change that now. Yeah. Oh, that's why the smart yeah, audio wasn't working. Work. Because we're putting in the wrong commands based on the radio. Yeah. All right, it's very comfortable. I love the form factor. I love how you can fold the antenna out. Oh, a bit of break up there. Nice. I can see this being very popular for people who already have a lot of crossfire receivers. Man, I don't know what I can say. There's not, let's see what happens if I let go of the sticks. Is there any movement? No, it just seems to stay on point. 
bit of back and forth. Gimbals are feeling good. I thought it'd take a bit longer to get used to a completely new radio. The Tango one I thought was a little bit too big. I didn't really care about the screen in the middle. This one, it seems like uh, they've really focused on what they want, which is a solid radio just for Crossfire, no other garbage, and yeah, I, I like it. And I also, this, I don't know if you can see this in shot here, Tony, but just being able to fly around and have my finger just resting on that arm switch, being able to press that button if I need it, it's kind of, you don't have to look around for it all. It's very, very comfortable when it's in your hand with your fingers on that switch. Whereas most of the time flying on my other radios, like the X lights, and this wind is crazy. On the X lights, you've got to kind of look for it and flick it with your thumb. This is definitely not the case. You can reach all the switches with your hand on the radio. It's almost like a well-designed, where an Xbox controller met the uh, met a pilot's radio. Ooh, a, bit, a lot of break up there. All right, what battery voltage do you want me to bring this down on, Granger? 21, 20. All right, I'm still at 22, bro. Yeah. And the beauty of Crossfire, in your experience, how are your fail safes, Granger? Really? Yeah. And we're at a fair way, and I should say, Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in for, oh, getting break up. Oh, I almost, I had nothing on the screen there. I'm going to come in, land, boost the video milliwatts because there is a spot where without fail, I will get break up on uh, my X light. So we'll see how we go on this. Gee, that car is loud. Jesus. All right, here we go. We're going out again and I'm going to push this thing. Where are you going to go? It's well, there's, uh, I'm going to be, behind you. sorry? Lots of trees behind. I'm going to be going, if you look at my hand, knowing which I'm facing, I'm going to be going that way. Because right, so you know how there's like a pond over there, which is what Granger loves yep, to hear. Yep. But we always get fail safes over that way. Do you find that? Should I be turning around? Yeah, turn around, keep turning. How am I going? Now. Okay. Now. All right, so. I don't know how your video's going to go. The video is still clear. I'm near the pond. Oh, oh, video was terrible. But I should say no dropouts in terms of the radio if you how many times have we been flying around here on free sky tony and it's dropped out on our 2.8 2.4 every time well nah. very good. how many how many fail safes have i had you. remember yeah. when i lost it over here into the mud that time that's and we, i think yeah. we lost planes there too yep we've had some fail safes so this crossfire is absolutely smashing my uh i know it's not scientific but in this little run significantly better than uh my free sky x light and now the big question could i use this all the time and i'm going to say absolutely this is kind of the radio that if you're into crossfire even though i'm not it, it makes me want to switch I'm, the range that you're getting and also the feel in your hand i don't traditionally like those bigger radios and i prefer the x light style and now that tbs has something smaller for me as a thumbing pilot uh yeah i'm in love i think a lot of people are going to enjoy this and the price point too definitely is uh for me i think it's it's kind of worth it so anyway i'm gonna bring it in and we'll see what the other boys think also very light in the hand actually i should land on the other side so we don't have to jump the fence all right stop lives another day <laughs> what's the worst that could happen no, <laughs> so it's the best that going to get great. You just go for it. Nah, a couple of kids, you'll be right. <laughs> Jesus. Nothing oh, okay, hang on. Hang on, stop. It's like the worst advice I've ever heard come from You have anyone. to snip it that out and just send it to the group chat. I want to hear <laughs> Okay, it. anyway, anyway, we digress. We're going to edit a lot of that out. But uh, my impressions are well done, Trappy. I think for a little, this is kind of doing everything that I want. You've got amazing range. You don't have to worry too much about fail safes versus some of the other frequencies and stuff you've got out there. Feels great in the hands. I love the switches and the fact that I was flying around and I had access to all these buttons. I didn't have to take my hand off the throttle at all. I could press them all with my fingers and my thumbs could still stay on the sticks. And it's simple, it works. It was ridiculously easy to set up. So I don't know for me and price wise, I think it's a great investment. If you've already got Crossfire at home, which a lot of people are gonna be looking at, it almost seems like a no brainer. So. Uh, I don't know, I'm a huge fan, but let's hand it over to the other boys and see what they think as well. Radio, Tony, first thoughts first. Now you're flying here, you're flying around 
uh, Granger's drone, yeah. so feel free. Just any trees, go for him, yeah, smash it up. Yeah, yeah, good. So look at him, he's a bit worried. He's half smiling over there with he nervous. He should be worried. Yeah. He should be. Okay, Tango 2. Um, I really like it. I like the form factor. It's, you know, for me, nice small screen. I think that's actually a bit retro. I like that. Okay. Rather than the big color screen. Remember the old one? It had a huge... It had a FPV. massive screen in the and middle. it was big in your hands. Yeah. But anyway, yep. I like the fact it, it's pretty basic. I even like USB-C. It's, you know, yes. everything's still on old micro USB. This is... Um, USB-C is good. I love the foldable antenna. When you throw your uh, controller in your bag, antennas always get in the way. And I hate... Un unmounting them and remounting okay. them again what, what it's meant to do too i don't know if you know this but when you flick it down yep. apparently it, it was meant to be an antenna stand you can tilt it to the side oh, so okay. you know how a lot of people put that their yep. radios yep. on the ground okay anyway all right so i like that i like the um i like the clicky buttons it's not plugged in I is hope. it not plugged no no, no. We're, we're good so yeah. i like the clicky buttons they're good you can tell um when they're on and off because when they're on they're depressed and they sit within the housing um, even the scroll wheel, the way it's designed into the into the um, handhold, I really like that. Um, yeah, it's good and very very familiar interface on uh, with the OpenTX. Yeah. Well, um, this is this is actually not running I know OpenTX, but, but, but it, it will it, be. But it looks very similar in yeah, its current. It, it's, in its it, current. It worked the exact same so, way. So we had to make some on the fly adjustments today, and and having the ability to just change the mixing is uh, was great. Um, sticks feel very good. That was my first impression when I when okay. I laid hands on it. I felt the gimbals were really nice, and it's a nice weight. It's not heavy, um, and, cool. pl and plenty of buttons. It's got th two three-way switches, More two, than two enough, buttons I think, on the back. What you need for a drone, absolutely. Yeah, and, and do you know what? Wings. Even for a, a for long our wings. for a long-range wing, you know, like mid-range wing, yep. this would be great, I reckon. Right. So yeah, I like it. Ready to rip it around? Yeah, if it's Granger's one, let's see if we can hide it. Let's do it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, on the hand. The, radio, the gimbals feel great. Um, unlike a lot of the uh, radios you hand me, I actually quite like the tension on these sticks. It's, mm -hmm. they're, they're really nice. It's a great form factor in the hands. And I think you mentioned before, it's a lot like a uh, Xbox or a PlayStation controller. It's you know that it's a nice feel. It's very light, um, and I mean that in a nice way. It's not. It doesn't feel cheap and light. I, yeah, that's I 100% agree. It I, doesn't feel cheap, no, but it feels light. I, I think it must be the materials it's made from. It has like an expensive feel, but it's very lightweight. In, um, so you don't feel like you're flying a cheap controller. Um, yeah, I really like it. Buttons are all within my little finger reach. I don't have massive hands. Um, can I get to the back buttons? Probably the back buttons. Um, they're hot. I couldn't get them with my index fingers without reaching around uh -huh. like this. Uh -huh. So, um, so I'd have to use I'd have to use my my middle fingers for those. But yep. again, if you get used to that, certainly the top ones I can get with my index fingers. Uh, maybe this one, no. Even the the three way switches with the index finger, you'd have to reach around for them. Okay. Um, the old reach around. The old reach around. But no, I think um, I like it. And, and the fact that it's native crossfire is brilliant. Uh, All right, yeah. yep. Final thoughts, Tony? Um, final thoughts. I like it, and I think if I had a couple of flies with it, I think I'd get used to where the buttons are because they're slightly different to what I'm used to. Just take a little while to just get the uh, the memory muscle used to where each button is. But look, I really like it. And as I say, it feels like an expensive radio. It's not heavy. And I think if you're doing a day's flying, you could fly with this and you certainly wouldn't be getting sore arms or It's also hands. got a little neck strap too there. Little yeah, attachment I don't even think... It. To be honest, I don't think you'd need it because it's really not that heavy. Too easy. Yeah, I like and it. And what do you think like about the price? 150 bucks. Um, I might actually go and buy myself one. <laughs> and and Trappy, I might actually get rid of the R9 and get myself a uh, a Crossfire based on this. That's kind of how I feel as well. Yeah. And that's that's All it, right, folks. Maybe your arm switch. Yep. How is that arm pushing that thing in? That's a brilliant spot yeah, for I it. Yeah, really I really like really it. Like, it's like a kill switch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look for me. Hey, we better pl unplug. Yeah. So, so with me, yep. where my fingers sit on this, I don't have massive hands, but I just felt that these are a little bit far around. Oh, so the inside so, ones. Yep. So then there's a positive and negative about it. It's been not being a toggle switch, you can't just flick it, but I have to reach around, but it makes it more of a positive interaction. You have to think, of, I'm yeah, gonna go and, and switch that. I don't think that. you're gonna accidentally knock it. And that's what I mean, you're never gonna accidentally knock it. And these ones here on the back, I think they're nicely positioned. I just have to train myself to use my middle finger as sure. as, a, as, as a switch. Yeah, because we're so used to just using but, our thumb and index. But I think for a drone, you need an arm. Yep. 
and that's it. You Maybe need a, turtle mode. I've got turtle uh, mode on yeah, this one. Yeah, but you're down, so you can move your hands yeah, around at yeah. that point. Um, you can have a buzzer on. Um, so for I think for a, a drone, you're concentrating on sticks and arming. Yep. Right, everything else you're on the ground and you're doing stuff like beepers and whatnot. Um, if you're using it for a wing, um, what, what else could you use on a wing? Um, maybe on a pl fixed wing plane. Like return to home. Or you something. might have, yeah. Or you see if you click this on return to home too, that would be you'd be able to feel that it's you'd in, feel that it's on. It's oh, it's yeah. Just, yeah, it is. Yep, yep. So, so look, I like it. I love the materials it's made from. It feels very premium. All right. Yeah, nice. good. I'm gonna get myself one. Nice. Thanks, Tony. Johnny, so yeah, yeah, you've, you've yeah. wanted to chime in here because you didn't actually fly around with your with the Tango 2, with but what do you want to say? Yeah, you yeah, came so, over and you yeah, said, look, yeah, yeah. please, this is important. No one said this. Yeah, what yeah. is it? Okay, so, you know, with your, your toggle switches that you got for you, you can set to your arm and your disarm. Yep. This, this for me, would be one of the, like, key things because... My, the only time I've ever like chopped myself or nearly had any issues has been oh I'm gonna pick up my drone and I've either like bumped or like bumped to pick up my drone sure, and okay. armed the drone and nearly chopped my hands off. So yep. yeah, that in my opinion is amazing in it's, terms of like it's very you, hard to yeah, accidentally bump to that in. Accidentally isn't it? arm that, you're gonna have to be doing something really weird. Really, really weird. Dumb. Like yeah. dumber than grain to dumb, like ultra dumb. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so in my opinion, like that, that's a safety feature. That's great. I, I love that. Too easy. Yo, Granger. So uh, this is going to be interesting because you're already into the Crossfire ecosystem. So I want to know what you think about the Tango 2, Crossfire in general, all that sort of stuff with this new little remote. Yeah, well, I should probably mention, I just started flying Crossfire. So, and uh, look, I Why do... Why did you do that? Why did you make this Well, switch? every all, a lot of the races at the big events, it's sort of like compulsory almost to run Crossfire because everyone uses it and it's just really compatible and easy to work with. Um, and I did notice a lot less latency compared to S-Bus, which was like... It was crazy for me. I didn't think it was a thing, but it is. Um, uh, in terms of fail safing, I haven't had one yet. Uh, and how they've just implemented this into this little radio is just amazing. Yeah. I think that's really cool. How it's pure crossfire. There's no modules, nothing else like that. There's just made for you crossfire yeah. pilots. Um, yeah, and it's 150 bucks. I don't know if I said that. 150. Yeah. No, that's perfect. I like how this can fold down as well, the antenna, so you don't break it or snap it off. Because uh, your radio is huge. Your radio takes radio up is, so much room yeah, in your bag. Yeah, it's really big. So I think that's a really good idea. And uh, you're a pinching pilot too. So it's going to yes, be interesting also, to see yeah, how pinching. this feels on the thing. Do you want us to wind the sticks out a little bit for you? Uh, yeah, I wind okay. them out. Okay, hang on. You hold this. <laughs> with, with pinching, I do prefer the sticks to be longer and higher because you can, you know, when you're pinching, you usually have two fingers on the sticks, which you need more uh, range. Um, so yeah, no, this feels pretty good, honestly. This definitely, a lot of people are probably gonna compare this to the X-Lite. This feels way better than the X-Lite. I hated the X-Lite in terms of how it felt in my hand. Um, this feels like fine, I could totally use this. Okay. Um, in terms of like the Xbox style grip, I, I do I do enjoy that actually, because it's, it's just convenient having something so small. Yeah, you're probably used to having small things in your hand too, so. Ah-ha! Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> leave that yeah, one yeah. in! <laughs> yeah, you, let's, let's plug it in and go for a rip. Uh. All right, so this would be good because this is your goggles, your drone, but talking about your wow. radio. I actually really like it, surprisingly. Look at that smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, I'm usually really biased because I, I, I enjoy the bigger radios because I like having my like hands. It's hard to explain. I just like having something bigger to grab onto. Okay. See, this is going to be, there's going to be lots no of jokes. There's no jokes. No, you, you just can't. Yep, yep. That's what I feel with uh, my radio and that's why I really didn't enjoy the X-Lite. But this is like, this is fine. Like, and what you were saying before, having your f hands to rest on those switches, like I use my middle fingers on them. Man, this thing, and being able to reach the end of the stick, I feel so... So what? Agile, like I can move around a lot quicker instead of like reaching the places, you know what I mean? Um, in terms of the crossfire, it's just, yeah, it feels like my crossfire got on my controller. It feels great. Barely any latency, so it, it's something you've got to try and experience to really understand the feeling of it. Have a really good feel, like usually with uh, the smaller controllers and the smaller um, sticks, I should say, like how they're sort of closer together. Uh, me personally, I feel less in control in the tight, like sort of slalomy maneuvers. Yep. Just As moving. it feels with this though. It, it, this feels way better than the X-Lite. I can actually control it. It feels a teeny bit better than my 
new Crossfire there. But I'm really, I should say, I'm pretty damn new to Crossfire. So I haven't been flying it for ages to be able to like really feel the differences in sure, that way. Sure. Um, I think my viewers will appreciate that. That's fine. You don't yeah. have to, if you don't have a so story I'm not, to talk Yeah, about I'm not an expert in terms of that sort of uh, the latency. But uh, look, this just feels great. And for how cheap it is, I did not think it would be that cheap. 150 USD. That's, that's a no-brainer. All right. Who would you I, recommend to get this? Everyone. You really? can't. Look, I don't know if racers are going to enjoy this as much because I, I still think that they like the bigger style controllers in terms of the, of the feel. Most yeah. Most pinches. Well, I don't think most of the pinches. I just think that's what most people generally prefer. Um, but you'd ha I'd have to ask them personally. I don't really know. Uh, but this. Because I'm going to say, if I was going to the races, I, I love this X Light style. Like that's where I'm all about. Yeah. Um, if I was just going to go out for free, oh, this would be great for freestyle actually, because it's so small and handy to have. Like, it. I don't know why you wouldn't have one, and it's just crossfire. Like, it's not. It, they've proven themselves. TBS have made their name for themselves with crossfire, and my battery's on 12 volts, and that's. Oh it. yeah, that's a success. Yeah, yeah, you need to bring um, that in. Bro. I'm having too much fun, and that's with a radio. Um, I just pressed your arm switch yeah. for you. I knew what, I knew. Oh, what, I really enjoy those. Mess them up. Yeah, no, no. I actually really enjoy the buttons. Like, that's actually something completely different, and it's. A, it's a very, it doesn't have a cheap feel to it. It's got a really sort of like premium feel to this controller, which is, I really enjoy it. So big thumbs up to Trappy and uh, all the pe other people that worked on this. This is- You like it? I like it. I'd, pro really? I'd honestly probably get one. This is, I'm surprised. Okay, yeah. no worries. Thanks, anyway, Granger. No worries. Radio, there it is. There's my review of the TBS Tango 2. And before we go any further, something I didn't mention in the part one is how much TBS is just seems to be the master of forward thinking when it comes to F the FPV community. The products they design, they are not just made with a limited set of features that just serve right then. They are always thinking, gee, what's some extra functionality? You can really tell they are made by, like I should say, the team at TBS loves FPV. They fly FPV, so they are solving problems that we, a lot of other companies don't even bother to deal with. Things like more robust antennas, more robust switches, switches we've never seen before. And a big one I never knew about Crossfire. How many times have you had to marry up your firmware of your receivers to your transmitters when you're binding up? Oh, I need to update the module of this garbage that's inside here. I need to do some special module here. Oh, I need to flash my receiver to firmware, all that sort of stuff. I didn't know this, but when we bound up Granger's drone, we plugged it in, I rang him up and I was like, mate, I don't have any crossfire here. Bring your drone in so we can test this radio out. And he's like, yep, when you plug it in, it will either upgrade or downgrade the firmware on the receiver based on what your transmitter is. So they will always match and it does it all wirelessly. It is very, very, I guess, just a smart solution. This radio is gonna be updating or downgrading, putting your receivers on the right firmware so they're always gonna be working. You don't have to worry about the compatibility. You plug it into the computer and it just works. So that's enough randomly about how good TBS thinks about their product. It's another little feature I thought you should know. But what do I actually think about this radio in the hands? Who's it gonna be for? What are the pros and cons and some of the limitations? So let's go through pros first. I believe that this is gonna be the radio for 99% of people in the hobby. If somebody said to me, Stuart, what drone should I be getting, uh, sorry, what radio should I be getting now? I wanna come into the hobby. I don't wanna get a cheap radio. It is only 150 bucks. What should I be buying? I'd be like, hey, this, this TBS Tango 2 it is the radio of choice. It is gonna serve most people well. You can do bandos, you can do racing, you can take this thing anywhere, you can throw it in your backpack. It's extremely portable. I love the folding antenna. It has design switches that we could only dream of. It's not gonna take up very much space. It's got an internal battery. It charges by USB. It's just doing so many things right. And also the range you get on here, it is a rock solid, the rock solid RF length that I would say if you asked a pole of pilots. Let's put a little pole up here. What link do you trust most between oh, the 2.4, the free skies, the jumper, whatever they're going to be using, the fly sky or crossfire? I can guarantee that most people out there are going to be saying crossfire link is by far the strongest link that they have connected to their craft. So you're going to be getting less fail safes. Now, who is this radio not for? And that's very, very clear. I'm going to say people who already have a whole bunch of little whoops out there. You might have some little D8 Tiny Hawks or old school whoops, whatever it is, and they are bound up to your old school free sky radio. This is not going to replace it. It has no big JR module in the back. It is purely a crossfire ecosystem. And I asked Trappy and I said, I rang him up on the phone and said, hey mate, so it doesn't have a JR bay. What about those pilots who have a whole bunch of little uh, whoops lying around? And his answer was simple. 
This radio, it's not made to replace that old radio for your whoops. You've probably already got those whoops, so you've probably already got a radio to fly it. That's not what this is for. This is for the everyday drone racing pilot who wants to be putting crossfire in their craft, having the best RF link going out, easily throwing it in your bag. So it's not gonna be replacing that radio, but chances are, if you wanna upgrade your radio, you can always keep that old school one for your, um, for your Tiny Hawks and stuff like that. And a big one too, on that note, that Free Sky doesn't even make a radio that supports those old D8 quads without having to go and buy an extra module adapter in the back. That is absolutely stupid. I, don't know, not, I do not know why Free Sky did that because, look, I probably have about 10 to 20 Tiny Hawks. I absolutely love them. I teach people to fly on them. That's, you know, I go around small classes, all that sort of stuff. This bad boy right here, I went to go and buy some radios and I couldn't believe it. I can't even buy an old school QX7 or anything anymore because they've got that dumb D8 lockout or whatever. They just don't support it anymore. So Free Sky just shot themselves in the foot. As far as I'm concerned, that radio brand is dead. You're not going to be seeing too much more. The other one too, we have the Jumper Pilots. It is much smaller than the Jumper, so this radio feels quite heavy, especially compared to this. And the other audience that this isn't going to marry up towards is those extreme long-range pilots because it's only going up to 250 milliwatts max. And so Trappy said, well, for those people, chances are those long-range pilots already have an extreme long-range range kit with a full-size crossfire in the back or if you don't want to when you want to go extreme long range but we're talking like those 10 kilometer mountain runs all that sort of stuff on wings that's when you're going to be better suited to jumping to a bigger radio like the jumper tx so overall i'm going to say the pilots who this is going to suit is 99 percent of the hobby people who like to go fly in parks bandos go to races anyone who's not flying whoops and not flying extreme long range you are going to be better suited to this so i don't know drop your comments down below what you think about the tbs tango 2 as far as i'm concerned i am in love this is the radio that I'm going to be using for my everyday 5 inch, 4 inch, 3 inch quads, anything that I can stick a crossfire receiver in, it's going in and yeah, I just got to say hats off to the team who designed the Tango 2, hats off to Trappy. I know in the past TBS and myself, we haven't always agreed on what we thought about products. Like I slammed the Oblivion, the, the Oblivion quad, I didn't really like it, but I feel like the Tango 2, it was just absolutely love at first sight. So I don't know, drop your comments down below, subscribe for my FPV related content, I can't, let, I can't wait to see what you guys think about it as well and I am happy that now we can finally release this video it's out of NDA so we've been playing around with it enough and you guys can finally see it so anyway subscribe for more FPV related content and as always happy flying